I'm going to begin by asking, I mean, do you remember this when it was a news story? And as a kind of creative in, involved in the film industry, do you watch the news and do you instantly kind of hear a story like this and start visualising it as a kind of screenplay and a piece of cinema? You know, not in general. I mean, I, I, I read a ton of magazines because I travel a ton, so I'm always on planes reading magazines. But I'm not reading them looking for movies. But I have to say, when I read this one, I was on a plane going to Bangkok shooting Hangover 2. And I read this article and I just couldn't believe that it was a real story. And, and the more we looked into it and the more we did our own research, the more it kept feeling like a movie. I mean, this is your first real kind of deviation into the, into the drama. I, I mean, it's still got kind of comedic sure. elements to it. But I mean, did you notice a kind of change of approach from your part as, as a director? Did you notice you, you kind of when you were on set, were you at all different to how you would have been if you were sort of directing old school or road trip? Yeah, I suppose, you know, it's a different approach because the tone of this movie is trickier than any of the movies that I've done before. And again, it's what you said, it's a mixture of, of drama and comedy. It's a dramatic comedy or a comedic drama, I don't even know. But it definitely changes your approach to the way you make the film. You know, but uh, on set you wouldn't notice it as much as you notice in editing where you're really balancing the tone. I think you do a great job of ensuring that particularly uh, Miles' character is likeable in the movie. And I think because if you were to read this story in the news, you would, you wouldn't, you would see them as being quite reprehensible kind of characters, people that are quite difficult to get on side with. Yeah. Was that one of the big challenges for you in kind of writing this screenplay to ensure that we could have that kind of relationship with them where we actually quite like Yeah, them? I mean, you know, you're watching the movie through the eyes of David, who, who's the Miles character. So it was really important that he feels sympathetic and grounded even though he keeps moving the line of what is right and it keeps shifting, the audience has to go along with him. So it was really important that, that we pull that off. A big part of that came just in casting Miles. I think Miles is terrific in the film, but I do think Jonah just about steals the show. I mean, I, I remember when I saw Cyrus and I remember realizing how incredible he is as a kind of dramatic actor. I mean, I mean, he's sort of renowned primarily for his, his comedic work, but he's quite a talent on, as a I kind mean, of drama. Yeah, I mean, what his best performance probably in Moneyball. It's just so wonderfully dramatic character. And uh, uh, yeah, so Jonah, to me, Jonah was the perfect actor and we really wrote the movie for Jonah. And I think even just seeing Jonah on the poster there, he represents uh, the tone of the movie because he's done dramas and comedies and it's like, it's not... He, he, he's not just a comedy guy, and I think that was really beneficial for us. And his laugh, which is kind of quite haunting in the movie, I mean, is that something that you kind of, uh, was that in the screenplay to have this, or did he bring it no. on himself? No, you know, actors find, actors always find different ways into a character. Some actors I've worked with become obsessed with the wardrobe or with their hair, and Jonah was concentrating on all those things, but literally, I think the night before we started shooting, he came to me and he goes, you know, I have this thing I'm working on about the way this guy laughs. And he did the laugh for me, and I thought, that's perfect, that's it. And uh, it was just one of his ways into the character. Uh, and Bradley Cooper, of course, is in this movie as well, who you've worked with a, a number of times. And he's in Black Flags as well, which you're, is that a TV miniseries you're producing? Is that yeah, we're up? producing that. Yeah. So, so that's, I mean, that's about the rise of ISIS, I, I believe. It is. I mean, so what can you tell us about that at this stage? Not much. <laughs> and I don't know why that was announced the other day, but it was. And uh, yeah, it's not much to talk about just right now, outside of the fact that it's based on a Pulitzer Pro... Uh, Pro the Pulitzer Prize winner from last year for nonfiction. This guy, Joby Warwick, wrote this phenomenal book called Black Flags. Because what we have noticed of late is when I, mean, when I was growing up, I kind of felt there were TV directors and there were kind of film directors or producers. And it feels like now that there's the kind of line between them is blurred. Do you feel as, a, as, a, as someone in the industry that, that there's sort of more doors are open now than there ever have been? Yeah, I mean, part of that is just there's so many avenues out there for content and so many filmmakers, great filmmakers, have, have, have been really successful at TV and TV is liberating in that you have such a longer time to tell a story that it just, you know, you could do such great work. And can you see yourself sort of doing more drama from this point onwards? Have you got a bit of a taste for it now after War Dogs? I mean, for me, it's always what the material is. You know, I still love comedies. Comedies are my favorite kind of movies. I still think comedies are really additive to the world, making people laugh is a good thing. So my heart will always be in comedies. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Thanks much appreciated. Nice to meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!